be persistent. Like if you take 10 shots and you make and nothing hits, like do 20 and then do 30, like just be ruthless with it. Okay. There's 7.4 billion people on this planet. What sets you apart? Yeah, yeah, check it out. I'm your host, Corey Cambridge. Uh, yeah. Everybody tuning in, you invited, you invited. No matter what mood you in, get excited, get excited. Everybody love the music, let me tell you how they do it. Whether writer or an agent, let me tell you how they made it. You are now talking to a silent giant. Wanna walk in their shoes, silent giants. Wanna study they moves, silent giants. Wanna know what they do, silent giants. Silent giants, y'all. <laughs> Welcome to the Silent Giants Podcast, a podcast highlighting the superstars behind your favorite superstars and in creative industries. I'm your host, Corey Cambridge. To keep up with the latest on the show, be sure to follow us on Instagram at, at Silent Giants Podcast. To keep up with my life, music, and more, be sure to follow me as well at, at Corey Cambridge. This week's guest is art director Nick Fulcher, the silent giant behind Atlantic Records. In this episode, we sit down and chat about his upbringing how he met and started working with Goldland, and what his day-to-day is like as art director at Atlantic Records. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to the art director, my friend, the silent giant, Nick Fulcher. Check, 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 mic check. Check, 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 check. Okay. There we go. Yo, Nick, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, player. <laughs> I feel like we like have, uh, uh, know each other like deep. Absolutely. Based like, on the people we know? Exactly. I feel like... We've known each other for like five, six years, but it's been like five or six minutes. True. That counts. <laughs> That's awesome. How's everything going, brother? Everything's going good. Everything's going good. How's life? Um, life is good. Where, uh, where are you living in the city? I live in Queens right now. Where about in Queens? Laurelton, Queens. Super deep. Laurelton, Queens? Laurelton, Queens. You got kids? I have. <laughs> you married? <laughs> I have no kids and I'm not married. Wow. Yeah. Are there bars out there? There's like one. Wow, you be living that sober life. Yeah. Because you should be creating. <laughs> no, I usually party in the city, and then the last train out there is usually like 3.15, so I'll just party till like 2.30, catch my train, call it a night. Why, why'd you move to Laurelton? What, what is it called? Laurelton? It's called Laurelton. Laurelton. It's like a part of Queens. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Laurelton. I was born here. You were born here? Mm-hmm. When did you move to, was Virginia, like, was it New York, Virginia? It was New York, Virginia, yeah. So I moved here when I was, or I moved to Virginia when I was three years old. Wow. My mom didn't want me growing up around the pollution and the drugs. And oh, man. I mean, it, I mean it, who doesn't want to grow up around <laughs> drugs and pollution? Exactly. But it didn't change much, but Virginia was like a little less polluted, I guess. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, what was it like in Virginia, man? What, what part of Virginia are you from? Um, Northern Virginia, like Alexandria, Lorton area. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So right below D.C., essentially. So wait, what's the specific? People say Northern Virginia, like they say upstate New York. Yeah. Except, and I'm like, yo, upstate's like eight hours <laughs> deep. <laughs> like, True. So where, where in, uh, in Northern Virginia? Hmm. Specifically, I would say it's around Springfield. Okay. That's like the city, city-ish. Are you a Redskins fan? Am I a Redskins fan? Yeah. Uh, by default. Like that's the team oh, come to, on, man. I had to cheer for. Don't come on, man. Me. I mean, we suck and we racist. Yeah. <laughs> We are totally racist. That's true. That's true. It's a racist name. I mean, I'm into football. I used I played a little bit, but I I just watch like playoffs. Like I don't really keep keep up. Which means you definitely don't watch football because we're never in the playoffs. Facts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't watch football at all. Because our team is trash and we're never in the playoffs. True, true. I think we should change our name though. Yeah, because Redskins is, is definitely offensive. I mean, it doesn't get any more clear than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what makes it worse is that when they try to defend it. Yeah. When it's it, like, yo, we already wiped out like 90% of Native Americans. Like, You ain't got to rub it in. But there's some terrible mascots out there. Like, like So the Redskins' name is bad, yes. but there are other mascots that are bad. What mascots? Like the Cleveland Indians. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah. But like the big cheesy red man with yeah. the big smile. Mm-hmm. And they have one with like the gold tooth. Fact, they do. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Terrible. But they've at least tried to like change it a little bit. Now they have the C True. for Cleveland. And, and the Redskins have the arrowhead, I think. They really run in. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think. Okay, well, 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 Cleveland definitely on their like logo, mm-hmm. like took off, um, like took off the Indian, Native American. Gotcha. And did just roll with the C. So okay. their official thing, even on ESPN, 
or whatever is the C. Yeah. And they have like the secondary logo as being like the, the happy, super racist, super racist gotcha. Native American. <laughs> I even feel bad even saying Indian. Yeah. Because they're not even Indian. They're not. But so, the, so Redskins are your team too? Yes. They're my team. Gotcha. Like die hard. Hmm. Like I go to the Redskins bar uh, every Sunday. Ooh. It's passionate. <laughs> we suck. That's a great way to describe it, passionate. Passionate, but we are losers, bro. True. So, so what was life like in Virginia, man? Um, Up there in Nova, man. Bougie side. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bougie. He was bougie. I didn't realize it was bougie until I left and came back. Yeah, that's what bougie people say. Back. <laughs> <laughs> bougie people say, I didn't yeah. know it was bougie until I left out and realized, damn, it's kind of bougie. Yeah, like I, I did shit that... What I, I thought everything was like what I did was normal. Like I played soccer, played football, played lacrosse, and I played in high school. Did all these extra curric- curricular things, and then I found out like not everyone gets those opportunities. So I was just like, oh, I guess I guess I'm bougie or blessed or whatever you want to call it. Blessed and bougie. Blessed, yo, yeah. The new bad and bougie the remix. remix. Yep. <laughs> blessed and bougie. The, the Nova remix. Exactly. Exactly. And and so, uh, how did you first get into like uh, art direction, or or how did you know you wanted to be a creative? What was your first like creative outlet as a kid? Was it through music, or was it through illustration, or painting, or photography? Um, I mean, I always loved music, but I'd say I, my mom used to sit down and draw with me, so that was my first like taste of artistic expression. I would say. Okay. Yeah. And um, in high school, we had a computer graphics class. And then I kind of I kind of just grew on my own. Like, we had the class, but I'd go home, download the programs, Photoshop, Illustrator, and just kind of took it into my own hands versus just waiting for the teacher and the lessons and stuff. I was so passionate about it. I'm like, yo, let's get this line wire pop in, download it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have a desire to uh, ever want to... Obviously, music is a big part of your life. Yeah. Uh, obviously, as you create for, for music. Mm-hmm. Um, was there ever a desire to want to be an artist yourself in a musical sense? Did you ever play an instrument? Or did uh, you kind of gravitate towards... So what were your early hobbies? Was it music-based or sports-based? Or? Early hobbies. I played piano. I played trumpet. Um, I played a lot of sports. Taekwondo was a hobby. Um, art wasn't really on the forefront until later in high school. Okay. Yeah. But I thought about getting into like music production, but as a hobby, not like as a mainstream source of income. Like It was just something I wanted to do. To do. And your your um, your love for art, you always you wanted to like, kind of pursue as a career. Yeah. Uh, who were like your early influences, um, like early on to kind of want to lead you on that path? Um, my early influences, I would say, I read a lot of comic books. Like I don't know the illustrators by name, but a lot of Superman, Batman, um, video game art was influential. Like video game, this game design was my first my first passion actually. Okay. I wanted to jump into that, and then I kind of got into like programming a little bit. On my own, like I didn't take a class or anything, and I was like, "Nah, this isn't for me. It's too much." So, music just kind of—I don't know—it just kind of fell on my lap. So I was taking the classes in high school, and of course, we had rappers in our high school. So I remember this kid's like, "Yo, yeah, bougie rappers, yeah, <laughs> did it and rocking eyes eye pop collars." Yo, I think I think homie did actually. <laughs> and um, his name's Corey. Corey Cambridge. And I'm not gonna say his name because he's probably gonna be tight that I said that. <laughs> uh, but he's like, yo, I rap. Do you want to do my cover? I was like, sure. Like, I'll do it for 20 bucks or like, or a meal or something. It was one of those two things. I can't remember. But um, it, it came out dope. It was one of my favorites at the time. And he remembers to this day. He hits me up all the time. He's like, yo, remember that cover you did for me? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was my first jump into like music, art, stuff. What was, what was that feeling like, um, you know, seeing that like come to fruition? Um, It felt good. Um. It's just weird because you know how rappers promote, like their whole team just posts their shit as the as their default picture, right. like MySpace times. So like everyone's picture was like my art, and I was like, "Yo, this is cool as fuck. My shit's everywhere right now." So, and so, uh, how did you um, decide that you wanted to go uh, to SCAD? You went to SCAD, right? For, I went to SCAD. And so, uh, what was that? How did that transition to to SCAD happen? Um, well, I went to community college first. To transfer out. So I got my fine arts degree. Or I was working towards my fine arts degree. I didn't get it. And uh, I don't know. I applied to VCU, as I said earlier. And then I didn't get in. Go Rams. (laughs) I cried. I cried for a day or two. Two days. Mad people called me. I was in a relationship at the time. And she was just like, oh, no. Because she went to VCU. Okay. Yeah. The girl you were dating? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And she's like, no, it's going to be okay. I was like, whatever, yo. And, um... 
Yeah, so like thug tears, thug, thug tears. <laughs> I'm being whatever, yo. It was like three big joints, just like one, <laughs> two, three, and then I was like, all right, because let's, let's, what's the next movie? VCU was your first choice. My first choice. It was the least expensive choice in state. Uh, uh, yeah, yep. There and we one go. of the best. And one of the best. It yeah. is. And and I mean, Arnold was there. Student hip hop organization was there. I had talked to him at the time before I went to SCAD. Okay. About just starting a chapter in general. Just yeah. And so, uh, how did SCAD end up getting on your radar? Um, I think a friend, my friend's parents told me about it. Okay. My friend Nikola, he's like this, uh, fuck, I forgot if he was Russian or Ukrainian, but his parents told me like, yo, you should check out SCAD, it's a beautiful campus. And I went to the Atlanta campus and checked it out with my mom. And she's like, oh, this is dope. I was like, yeah, I like this, I like this too. So I applied, they gave me two or three scholarships and I was like, all right, this is it. So went down there with like 200 bucks in my bank account. And it was lit from then on. And so what was, uh, I was putting $200 in your bank account and it was lit from there on. 200, 200, 200, 200. <laughs> There's $200 in the bank account and lit even go together. <laughs> like, yeah, I went to Walmart after and then I had $50. This yeah. shit was lit. <laughs> shit got litter. At that point in my life, it was pretty lit. <laughs> and so what did you study at SCAD? Um, I studied, what did I study? Communication arts. I was going to get my Bachelor of Fine Arts. That was like the graphic design degree. Okay. There, yeah. And so what, what was your experience like? It was great. So SCAD is a, they have campuses in Hong Kong, Lacoste, um, Atlanta, and Savannah. So it was a good mix of people because people bounce around the campus, campuses all over the world. So it's just like you didn't just have the Atlanta natives. You had fucking people from all over the world. And so were you based in, you were based in Atlanta and not based, Savannah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what was it like going up in like Atlanta? Did that like influence your art? It did because it's like I had a sense of independence that I never had. That was my first time living away from home. So it was just like everything kind of influenced me. Um, I was broke all the time. So my diet was Chick-fil-A and like black and mild. Yeah, you was broke when you showed up. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was, I was never popping. I, <laughs> I got the, uh, the reimbursement check. There you um, go. Yeah, from the scholarship. I was popping for like a month and then back to the same. Did you buy shoes? Uh, nah. Oh, when I, <laughs> oh, when I got my grant check? Oh, my G. Yo, we're right to the shoe store, dog. <laughs> Got to get litty. Yo. No, so, it was just food and alcohol for me. And so um, how does SCAD like, prepare you? Does SCAD prepare you at all for where you are now in your career? Um, in a sense, to collaborating with other creative people, it did. It definitely did. Because um, we have fashion students. We have animators. We have people from of, of all creative fields just kind of like chilling in one area. So just... To speak with them and understand their perspective on on how they see their work and how I see my work. It's just like, I kind of understand how to talk to creative people better and collaborate better. Okay. So you definitely build more of a network? Yes. Okay. And then so, tell me the journey of like, uh, how how did you, um, the next step in your career? Like, how, how long were you at SCAD? Did you finish uh, up SCAD? Or? Um, I was at SCAD for about a year and a half, maybe two years. Okay. But um, I couldn't afford my last year. And I went to D.C. for an internship, a clothing internship. It was an apparel brand. They started a Kickstarter. And I spent the summer doing that. And then I realized, like, I don't, like, my, my mom didn't fill out the, like, the FAFSA information thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, I was God. like, no way. I could, I could go back. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go have to go to New York and start working. So I came up, I came up to New York. and got it popping. And so... um. So you were there for a, a year and a half at SCAD? A year and a half, two years. And then, then D.C.? Then D.C. for this internship. Okay, how long were you in D.C. for? Um, just that summer. I stayed with my boss at the time. His name is, uh, his name is uh, Ryan. His name is Ryan. Okay. And um, yeah, we basically spent the whole summer like basically on U Street. Like we, had, we were in like a co-working space, like the alley. Like, okay. And um, yeah, it was, it was intense because we'd be there all hours of the day like... We'd finish up, go drink. And what's crazy is we actually did two campaigns. The first one wasn't successful. So we brought everyone in D.C. who had successful Kickstarter campaigns, and we interviewed them. Like, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? We took those, I guess, pros and cons and kind of applied it to our shit. Then we were successful the second time around. Wow. Yeah. And, and what made you want to come to New York? Like what, um, what kind of drove that decision for you? Well, my family was here, so I didn't have a choice. That's the only reason. Oh, so at this point, your family had moved from Virginia back to New York? My family was always here. My mom was in Virginia, and she moved up when I went to Atlanta. Gotcha. So everyone was up here. Okay. So I'm just like, I had nowhere else to go. Gotcha. So Ideally, I didn't want to come to New York. 
So you're not like a transplant. No. You're like a native New Yorker. So Queens is not like a, you move from. Yeah, it's not like this exciting, like adventure type shit. Right, right, right. Yeah. But you think that's kind of a positive? Um, I think it is. Nah, I don't know. I think it. I think it just is. Like I don't think it's positive or negative. Cause I, I would imagine like me coming from uh, Richmond straight to New York was mm-hmm. kind of like, uh, like coming from the D League to go into the league. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? True. And so you kind of had that like that excited feeling, almost get like new money. Yeah. Like you just know how to conduct yourself. Like you're going out partying every night, you club hopping, your priorities <clears throat> aren't really in check. Mm-hmm. Do you think that being from New York and having family here kind of grounds you and makes you more focused? Yeah, because I was always here for the holidays. Like I knew what to expect uh, on a on like a surface level. Now living here is a completely different story. Like it, it was dope. Like I guess developing here. Like I, I like New York now, but originally I, I didn't. I was just like it's too busy. Like I was more of like. Atlanta, LA, like that was like the plan. And so when you got back, to, when you got back to New York, did you plan on leave? Did you think you would be here for a little bit of time? Yeah, I mean, once I was here, I was like, all right, let me develop. Like everyone's here, let me build my network, let me try to, you know, help build this culture, meet people, get into music, get into studios, like just have a good time, essentially. So, what were the first steps for you as far as becoming, you know, a professional? It's a big difference in in, in doing kind of art design. Um, Kind of as a student, mm-hmm. uh, what was like the big step for you or breakthrough moment as a professional getting you on the right track? Um, I guess the big breakthrough moment for me as a professional designer. Um, yeah. I would say that's tough. I mean, I had a lot of breakthrough moments on my own before I came to New York because I'd worked with these artists. Like I worked with like Gold Link and, and Chaz and it's like. Oh, before the move to New York? I worked with Golding before the move. How, how'd that happen? Uh, he went to high school with me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> in Virginia? Mm-hmm. Is he, he went, a Virginia cat? He went. I mean, he bounced around, but there was a point when he was. Uh, he went to Hayfield, which is my really. Yeah. Wow. He's, so th- he sat at our table. He was quiet as fuck. He was he? Was he? It. Was he the rapper in the Izod pop collar? He was not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely was. I was not. trying to get you. Yeah, I was nah. trying to. Be like, <laughs> I should have been like, yeah, he was. Yeah, he nah. went to the same high school. <laughs> get the fuck out. So, nah, but. Yeah, just like, I don't know, things started to move with him and I could just kind of, I kind of had the foresight to see how things would be with all other artists as things were moving so fast with him. It was just like, wow, like, I just kind of understood my role and how I needed to like finish things, prep things and talk to people. Because was he doing music at the time while he was in high school? No. Okay. So once he, you had already left high school when you started working with him? Um, I can't remember. I think I, I definitely left. I wasn't, because he's a class or two under me. Okay. So I can't remember if he was still in high school or out of high school. But you were out of high school I was sure. definitely out of high school. Mm-hmm. And like, how'd that connection happen? Did he have music available and you were like, he oh, just reached out to you? This is crazy. So um, his manager used to rap. Okay. His name is Henny. It's every manager, yeah. by the way. <laughs> the story of a manager is, I used to rap. I used to, yep. So Henny used to rap. And then I remember it was Gold Link. It was D, Gold Link. So D and his friend gave me a ride to work one day from the bus station, and I had his manager, I had Henny's mixtapes on me, and I was like, yo, you guys should listen to this, check it out, da-da-da. And I think they made the connection to reach out to him and ask him like a whole bunch of questions, and then that relationship kind of got fostered through that ride to the mall, because I worked at the mall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I don't tell that story often, I just because I, I feel like I'm taking too much credit for it. No. Nah. But... I feel like that's how that how, that's how that played out. And so, so how did that that relationship was that like the first artist you started working with, that like was, on a major kind of level? Yeah, on a I guess he wasn't major, but on a on a on a buzzing level, buzzing level. Yeah. And so, like, how did that uh, opportunity propel you uh, for for other projects? Well, I guess tons more people started reaching out to me just based off me working with Gold Link and working with Henny previously, because you you gotten. Um, uh, Ranked the complex for yo, I did. I forgot about that. <laughs> I did. And so, how did like that opportunity? How did that feel? And how did that really come about? That felt good. That gave me a huge confidence boost. I didn't even know it was gonna happen. Like, I just woke up one morning to like mad text, like, "Yo, check this out. Your your number. I think it was like thirteen or eighteen for best album covers of the year." And I was like, "Wow, that's fucking crazy." Of everyone, of all like of all the 
North American releases, I'm up there. Like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. So, but I worked with a girl, Christina. I forgot her last name. I can't pronounce it. But she did. She helped me on the illustration work, or she did the main like masks on the cover. Yeah, and I did the layout, the coloring, and the typography. Yeah. What, what, so what's the what's the kind of the story behind that album cover? Was there? Um, did you get the music first beforehand? Did, did his management or did Golden get you personally? What's the story behind that? Um, so we got the music first, but uh, Golden had a direction that he wanted to take. Like he was specific about the African masks, so we sent over a bunch of different masks. I sent some over. She sent some over. And her direction was more what he wanted, so we kind of built that out. Okay. Yeah. And how long did that take to to from start to completion? From start to finish, probably like a month, month and a half, just because like we're not all sitting in one room together. It was through email. Wow. Because where, where is she? What's her What's her uh, name again? I don't. Christina. I don't want to call her Christina. Christina M. Christina. Yeah. Okay. And where is she based? Uh, Where's Christina based? <laughs> she was based in Virginia at the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, we were just, we were just never together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. And so. Uh, how did that opportunity with Complex, did that lead you into another uh, stage of your career? Um, was it a lull? Sometimes after like a high, yeah. there's like a lull. We kind of like plateau for a little bit until you get another high. Was that the case? It made me want to work harder. Like it didn't give me any new or crazy opportunities per se, but it made me be like, all right, like I'm on the right path. And I wasn't even looking for like, like validation in any way, but that came and I was like, all right, I'm going to kill shit now. So... And so you're currently art director at Atlantic, Atlantic. Records, mm-hmm. which is an amazing. Yeah, I still don't believe it. Yeah, that's fucking. Like I'm fantastic. gonna wake up like ten minutes from now and just be like, "Yo, that's crazy, crazy which, dream." What What's the story of how you became um, into that position? Like, what was your professional route to get to that point? Um, so I've I've worked in music a lot. Um, damn, I don't know if I should tell this story. I've worked in music a lot, and. Uh, I went to a friend of mine's birthday party, uh, Jacqueline. She worked with Selection. And um, she's like, I'm having a birthday. Come through. And I, I was going to flake. I was going to frosted flake. Frosted flake it. And then um, I was like, all right, fuck it. Let me just roll through. So I rolled through. Sweaty as hell as always because New York is hot as fuck. And uh, yeah, she's like, hi, how are you? I'm like, good, good seeing you. Da, 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 da. And she introduced me to, um, wow, I'm blanking on his name. That's not good. She introduced me to this dude. And he, um, so he was best, he's best friends with the guy, the creative director at Atlantic. Okay. So we were talking and um, he's like, I'm, I'm like, I'm a designer. I was telling him what I do. And he's like, oh no, I know your work. Like you're, you're really good. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, thank you. So what do you do? He's like, I'm actually a designer too. But he was downplaying his shit. Like he's like big time and I had no idea. So he's like, I worked with 50 Cent and I did Get Richard I Try and a bunch of shady records he made. Meanwhile, he's sitting across from me just like, a normal Joe Schmo. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, I want to I want to I want to get a Grammy one day for my work. And he's like, Oh, that's amazing. I have some people I want you to meet. It, so he kind of is that a thing? A Grammy for art you direction? You can get yeah, it's not televised like the, the for, main artist, but it's like before the ceremonies, you can get a Grammy for album packaging. Wow. Yeah, that's a goal. It's a goal. I see you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he, yeah, he just kind of lined me up to meet with a couple different people, and the creative director at Atlantic was one of them. And yeah, things just ended up working out. I I was set with Sony too, but Atlantic was more my lane, I guess. Wow. Flex, flex, flex. That's amazing. Yeah. And so what is the day in the life of an art? You're in a a very blessed position as a creative Mm -hmm. in the sense that a lot of creatives kind of have like a freelance type of situation where you're kind of like project to project, yeah. don't know what's going to be happening in three months, where you'll be in six months or in a year, or whatever the case may be. That's true. So how is like being in an environment where it's structured, you go into an office every day, kind of change your art? Um, so as an art director, I can hire people. It, it, it taught me to delegate more. Like that's, that's, that's what an art director is. It's a designer that can delegate, okay. basically. And I didn't know that till I got there, honestly. So you manage a team? Um, I don't manage a team, but we can hire people out. Like, okay. Like if you're a designer, I'm like, I like your work. Let's talk. We'll figure out budgets and we'll hire you to work on this. Got you. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So it's changed me in a, deli- in a sense that I don't have to do everything because I've always been set on doing every little thing and making it look great. Um, so it's allowed me to trust other people more and talk to creatives in a more, I guess, business standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Do you enjoy the administrative? Does the administrative at all take away from the creative or 
do the both do both uh, creative and administrative work kind of help? Um, or you know, make, it, it make helps, a better product. It helps if you come from a design background, because some art directors are just like they'll do mood boards and they'll understand creative, but they won't work in creative. Because I came from being a, a graphic designer, I think I know how to speak to to creatives or to creative people, illustrators, typographers, whatever you want to call them. Wow, mm-hmm. that's absolutely amazing. It's almost like being a, like a salaried rapper. <laughs> <laughs> rapper on salary benefits. Yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah, basically. go to dinners when I want to, just to stunt. <laughs> and so uh, what are you working on currently? Like, what, is, what is your day-to-day like? Um, like? Describe the average day for me as an art director. Okay, I can't tell you what I'm working on. But no, no, don't, don't tell me that. So my day-to-day, basically, just go in, check emails, and kind of... I mean, we usually have like seven or eight projects in rotation at a time. And what time does your day start? Uh, usually 9.30. Okay. 9.30, yeah. And um, I usually wrap, yeah, responsibility. <laughs> we'll wrap around like 10. I mean, not 10. Wow. Six. Okay. So okay. Like, I was like, damn. So like 9.30 to 6. <laughs> okay. Um, sometimes we stay late. Sometimes we come in early. But that's like the gist of it. That's like the time. Um, usually we'll have like seven or eight projects in rotation at a time. That you're, that you're juggling that for, on, yeah. for releases. It can be singles, it can be albums, it can be tour posters, it can be, it can be anything, really. Wow. Yeah. And, and who, who uh, assigns this to you? Um, Is it like the heads of the label, like the mystery person? No, we have someone in our department that assigns them to us. Okay. Um, but if we really want to work with somebody, we just speak up and be like, all right, are we cool with him working on this? Cool. Great. That's fantastic. And everyone, everyone's kind of like a family. Like it, there's not, no one ever really butts heads in our department. That's awesome. Yeah. And so do you still do freelance work now or is, is it, are you able to do that as an art director or? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, it's like, what's, what's uh, the future for you? Is there something in, in your career that you, you want to do that, that you haven't quite done yet? Um, I want to start a team. Like I want to have an agency. I don't I hate that word. I want to start a collective, I guess, of creatives and kind of work on these projects for like, through my business versus working with a label or something else, something along those lines. Like I want to be handling it top to bottom. Okay. Yeah. And um, as far as like advice goes, like what advice do you have? Because you're in a very unique position. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe with, than any other creative that I've had on the show, because you kind of can approach it as like truly professional, like going to an office at a time and your benefits and salaries. Mm-hmm. Like what advice do you have for folks who want to follow that career path of, of more of, of traditional business administrative art design? Mm-hmm. Um, like what were some growing pains for you? Um, growing pains for me, I would say, um, I remember when I first moved to New York, I, I literally just sent cold emails out, literally like 20 to 50 a day. So I could work with people like, yo, because I just got here and I don't have a job. So it was mostly like freelance stuff. So I sent my emails out. I got a response from Madbury Club. Mm-hmm, yeah. They reached back out to me and we worked on something that didn't, I don't think it went like it went live or anything, but we worked on something. And uh, fuck, what was the other person? Oh, same plate. They're like a management label. I okay. Think. Yeah. So I worked with them. Um, so my advice would be just just be persistent. Like... If you take 10 shots and you make, and nothing hits, like do 20 and then do 30, like just be ruthless with it. Okay. There's 7.4 billion people on this planet. What sets you apart? And you have to do those things that you think no one else would do. Simple. That's it. So I say the yellow pop collar. <laughs> what sets you apart? Yellow pop collar for sure. <laughs> well, Nick, man, thank you so much for being on the show, brother. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me. You're that dude. <laughs> My best friend who I just met an hour ago. Thank you. My man. (laughs) PA all day. Thank you so much to the Silent Giants behind this episode of the Silent Giants podcast. This episode has been mixed by Mark Bird of NBM Studios, located in Astoria, Queens, NYC's number one recording studio for music, podcasting, and other audio recordings. Be sure to follow them on Instagram at NBM Studios NYC. Also, the music for this episode has been brought to you by Oblip. Be sure to follow him as well on Instagram. I'm your host, Corey Cambridge, signing off till next time.